Hey guys. Well, figured it's been a while. Do a little update on the wagon air. And it's not a good update. We got problems. So, try to keep this video short. What happened was a few weeks ago, I was driving to work, and it was about six, six in the morning, so it's still dark out. Get on the busy highway here. And it's rush hour traffic, of course. I probably only made it about a couple miles down the road before it went all to hell. What happened? Well, came to a stoplight. Chief did a weird shift thing. I was like, that's different. That did not feel right. Light turned green, went to go, and noticed we're not moving fast. And RPMs are way up there. Well, I was going nowhere fast. And I shifted through all the gears, trying to get it to move better and of course there's rush hour traffic and if you guys are familiar with Florida here in Palm Beach County area no offense to not I'm not saying all you guys here that live in this area but a lot of you guys are just dicks on the road I had my hazards on everything people are honking my, their horn and flashing you know getting around me being jerks and it's like really guys I'm just trying to get out of your way just you know get out of my way I don't get out of your way anyways so, rush hour traffic, nowhere for me to pull over. So, unfortunately, I wanted to pull over and look at it, but I couldn't. It wasn't safe. Uh, I got down the road a little bit. So, I had to, I had to, had to I mean, it had to be like 4,000 RPMs. And I was like crawling. Got to a point where uh, I could turn. I wanted to go to the right, shorter, but there was so much traffic I couldn't get over. And no one would let me over. So, as soon as I saw a left turn to go across the other traffic to get to the road, I did. Got over there and it was hot. I can hear it, I can just feel it coming from the floor and everything. Look underneath, transmission fluid everywhere. So, crap. Blue transmission line. So, I put that back together, called my girlfriend, said, Hey, can you run to Walmart for me? Or in the closest auto parts store, get like a gallon transmission fluid. She went, did that, filled it up. After about three hours of waiting for her to do that, traffic dying down and letting it cool down, started it up, did not want to move still, put some more transmission fluid in it, finally got it to move, but was not happy. Uh, got her down the road, got her home. Uh, she didn't like reverse at all. It's like, again, high RPMs. Down the road, I got up to 55, but she, and she was going, but she was wandering gears, slipping a little bit, so crap. So I got her home, dropped the pan, Found little chunk, chunks in it, you know, not big, but enough to be alarming. So it was like, crap, well, you know, by some miracle, like Jesus walking in the water or the stars aligned, maybe the transmission's fine. If I just put a filter in and put fresh transmission fluid in it, you know, living in La La Land, but I knew it was time, but I tried and I got a shift. I actually was running decent. I drove down the road here, was shifting fine. It seemed like nothing was wrong. Then the next day, slippage city again. So she's hurt. I heard the transmission. So there's that. Plummet two is in all honesty, this is 360. She's tired. She's knocking. She's burning oil like no other. I mean, <laughs> driving down the road is puffing out blue smoke. Still got a little good oil pressure though. But yeah, it's like Uncle Buck's, you know, Uncle Buck's car. Just Poof, big old black smoke, blue smoke, excuse me, not black smoke. So, here we're at. What to do? I can either A, uh, drop this 727 and rebuild it, or B, drop it and swap it in for another 727. I have a couple sources that I'm pretty sure I can probably find another 727, hopefully a decent one just to put in. But, the engine's pretty much on its way out too. Like it needs, it honestly needs to be pulled and rebuilt. So, what to do? Well, this is what I'm thinking of doing. As I mentioned in one of my videos when I introduced you to the Wagner, I was thinking about doing a last swap. Well, I think it might be time for that because with the amount of money that I'm gonna be putting into rebuilding this 360, um, or even finding another 360 to be honest, and either rebuilding the 727 or finding a 727, I could put an LS in it with a 4L80 like I want, 
for probably about the same, maybe a little bit more, but in all honesty, I'd rather put my money towards that because that's what I want in the end. So, that's what I'm thinking of doing. Whether it be a 5.3 or a 6.0, if I can find a decent one for a good deal, that's what I'm going with. Now, there's two ways I'm going to go about this. Either A, if I find a decent donor, like a Crash Suburban or a Crash Truck, I'm going to go for that. And that would be honestly probably the best move just because I, I can pull the vehicle here beside it, swap everything I need to there, and just work on my own leisure. Or the cheapest route I've found, I think the cheapest route so far, is the junkyard, local junkyard here, one of them. I can go in, pull an engine and a transmission for about 600 bucks. And then of course I can pull the harness there too. Harness and ECU for probably like another 100 bucks. Versus most of the crash suburbans or trucks I see around here on the interwebs is probably going for, I've seen them anywhere from, you know, Probably the lowest I've seen is twelve hundred bucks, so I could save five hundred bucks right there. And then, granted, if I got that a crashed one, in theory I can take the time, maybe sell some parts for, sell at the whole unit as parts, or just sell part part it out. But then I have to get rid of it too at some point, unless I sell the whole thing. So I can make some money back that way. So that is one pro to getting a dinner. But the less headache, the better for me right now. So I might just go with. Well, I say headache, but that could turn into a headache too, doing a junkyard uh, motor. Because usually when a vehicle's in a junkyard, it's there for a reason. Is it there because the transmission went out? Or is it there because the engine's bad? You know? But just like with going for a wrecked donor, I figured, well, if I can find a wrecked suburban or truck in the boneyard, there's a good, good chance that vehicle ran, you know, when it was in the accident. So... That would be obviously be the best contender. Now, of course, you'd have to check, depending if it's front end damage or back end damage, you have to check to make sure the engine wasn't, you know, wrecked. The engine or the transmission wasn't wrecked in the accident, of course, you know, like a broken tile housing or whatever the case. So I'll have to check that. Now, there's certain things, of course, I can check while I'm in there too, of like, you know, simple things like pull the valve covers off, pull the timing chain cover off, uh, check, you know, make sure there was no water contamination in the oil, the quality of the oil, make sure it had oil, take the drain plug off see if there's any metal in the magnet etc so i'm going to do all of that when i'm there as far as transmission goes best i can do is really check the quality of the transmission fluid and then of course if there is any fluid they usually drain them actually with the junkyards so there probably won't be any but i could still probably see some remnants on the dipstick uh, i could drop the pan see what it looked like in the pan if there's any metal chunks metal flakes just you know debris in the oil etc and shift it through the gears just to make sure it manually shifts and it's not like all bind up to single problem. So, oh, I'm right there. So, that is the plan with the Wagoneer is LS swap time. Now, I'll probably get, I was gonna keep the two way transfer case in here because they're not a bad transfer case and it's not the quarter tech, which I'm happy about. But I might, for again, for ease of. Cause I'm on a very tight budget for this um, because I just don't have the funds to be honest for this right now. Um, not to give your uh, sap story or I'm broke and woe is me and feel pity on me. But right now, financially, things are a little tight, you know, between the move and getting, trying to get my business started and stuff. I just don't have any money to put into this. And now I'm actually technically need to kind of try to find out somehow to bring money Get money to buy another vehicle because this is my daily driver so if i'm gonna have this apart for months it's gonna take me a while to gather the parts and get the time to do this i really need to find another vehicle which i'm thinking about trying to find a gmc or chevy suburban uh 2500 with the 8.1 full drive because be a good rig to work out of barn doors play in space keep my tools dry in this crazy florida rain we got or if i picked up an engine you know it'd be really easy to keep that engine dry don't have to worry about the elements and it's a tow monster, you know, you can tow 10,000 pounds, I think it was, with that vehicle. So that's 01 to 05 Suburban 2500 is what I'm thinking about trying to get with the 8.1. Uh, anyways, getting off subject here. So I got to figure out a way to buy that because I need, I need a work vehicle. It's a mobile mechanic and I need something to tow with, to be honest, for customers' vehicles or whatever the case. Now, back to subject here. So it's going to be a while before I get to this. And plus, I'm in the dead of, well, beginning of fall, 
it's still freaking hot here in Florida. Um, uh, so I was thinking anyways, it's going to take me, I probably won't even start on this until another month and a half. Because, like I said, get some parts gathered before I start doing this and whatnot, or try to. And not to mention, I'm going to wait till it's winter. You know, it doesn't get, like, super cold here. But it'll definitely be a lot cooler than freaking 85 to 95 degrees like it's been lately. You know, it'll be more like 70 to 80, which would be nice. It's a little bit more comfortable to work in. So I'm going to wait for then. So, um, but again, about the transfer case, probably go with the 241 out of the donor vehicle just because I looked up. There is an adapter plate and setup shaft setup I can buy to adapt the 4L80 to the 208 in this but it's like anywhere from 600 to 700 bucks so if I can save a few bucks and get the uh just get a transfer case with it for like 100 bucks or whatever I will okay so now it's 11 minutes I need to finish this up it's going way too long uh thank you if you're set he's still with me listening rambling on about this but I'm going to do a video series on this, starting from pull on this engine. Um, I've looked up videos on this, and there's a few people that have done videos on LS swaps. Most of the LS Wagoneer videos I see is just them driving it or people trying to sell them. Um, very little like information on the swap. I only found a couple of videos and them kind of talking about the swap or showing how it done that it was done. But I want to give a very detailed one, you know, from start to finish. Um, again. For you guys doing it on budget like I, I can tell you what works, what doesn't work. Um, and all of this, if I mess up, you can learn from my mistakes what not to do. Because I'm good at that. So that's the plan. So stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a whole video series. First video probably won't be for like another month and a half or so. Because again, even before I pull this engine, I got some stuff. I, I'm pretty busy with other work, you know, making money, trying to. And plus, again, I'm going to wait till it gets cooler before I start on this. So it'll probably be like maybe late October before I'll even start pulling the engine. And I'll start the series with that. So, um, yeah, we'll start with that. Do a video every time I work on it. I'll try to keep it to like 10-minute videos to like 20-minute videos. Just because, you know, if you guys want to skip through it, it'll make it a little easier. And it just helps me with uploading it instead of like an hour video. Try to keep it, try to keep it, you know, in sections and shorter videos. So stay tuned. If you're interested in this, um, subscribe. Thank you for following. Thank you for everything. You guys have a great day. Um, oh, and uh, trying to decide if I'm going to go with the ECU from the donor vehicle because I'll probably be the best route, cheapest route, and just get it flashed. Um, but I've been thinking about the Holly Terminator set up just because of ease of installation but we'll see because honestly this is going to be a hot rod i mean it's going to double the horsepower to begin with but i got my 63 chevy for with the big block for my hot rod this is this i want to make this reliable to go to oregon and back if i wanted to but anyway so that's enough of me talking stay tuned can't wait to show you guys the story and the video on doing this and you guys have a great day all right take care